Applebaum. Um, the show in Vienna at Gallery Knox St. Stephen is called Plainiverse. The tables are um, five tables of feelies. I'm in front of one of them. And I started working on the feelies about three years ago. So there are feelies from the past three years. They're made of plasticine and Sculpey and Fimo, not cooked. I felt if I cook them, they, now they're alive, and if I cooked them, it would kill them. So I was very interested in the fact that I could always change them. When I started working with this material, it was very important that it was about experimenting with a new material. So for me, the fact that they're not cooked was very important. What they really reference for me, they're little image objects, but also little paintings. I wanted to keep this notion of the idea of sketching. So each one's different. I usually don't have an idea or an image in my mind of what they're going to be. This table is, not a, is the one table in the room that's not feelies. And it's the table that really references Planiverse, which was the sequel to Flatland, a Victorian novel that came from Edward Abbott, I think the author's name was. So Flatland, in Flatland, which is about a two-dimensional world, there is a, a revolt, which is called Color Revolt, where the women revolt. So these pieces, which come out of the feelies, are called Color Revolt. What I did was made a plasticine base carried it, brought it over from New York, and poured the pigment. For me, they're a little bit different. They're more studies in the sense that they're all found color, which is just glitter in a bottle that I pour. So they're pure in a sense, they're kind of like an alchemy, they're alchemistic, if that's a word, and they're pure material. They're not stable, and they exist in time for the show. Afterwards, who knows? One of my favorite comments about the um, color revolts is somebody said that it's like Joseph Albers on acid. These pieces are called ombres, and it's a term that refers to the blending of color. And in printmaking, it is called a split fountain or a rainbow roll. So what you do is you put two colors down, one color in the middle, and you roll, and that makes the blend. It's fashion fabric, it's out of the fashion world, which is unusual because my older work, I used to dye everything. So I think my hand and all of the handicraft is more in the feelies in here it's this idea of a found object. These pieces, first of all, they've never been shown. It's very exciting for me. Um, I took a class at Greenwich House Pottery in Greenwich Village, and these are the first ceramics that I did. What's interesting about um, the ceramics is there's a lot of different glazes and also a lot of different clays. We have terracotta, stoneware, and porcelain. This piece is stoneware, and I took a class in iridescent painting. So you can see the gold and the silver and even pearlescent. So it's been, it was glazed about, oh, six or seven times. They were inspired, a lot of the art historical references, Picasso, Moreau, but I was also looking at a lot of children's art. And I like the simplicity and also the freshness of children's ceramics, especially. The whole technique was very liberating for me, and it's very painterly, too. I think with the feelies, they're painterly in color, but not in brush stroke. So for me to kind of very freely paint on these was really a, a joy. When I came to Vienna, these pieces had, were not titled. So I thought about Greenwich Village and its history, and so we decided to name the pieces after street names in Greenwich Village. So there's Jane, Leroy, all the kind of first names. 
So I like the fact that they're very personal in a sense. So these are also debut, first time, and they're titled Ozark Mountain Tourist Pots. It's a child's clay that's air dry clay. What I was interested in, form, not so much color, and the fact that it's all hand done and it's very fatty and very kind of voluptuous form. I took out the color. I, when I first started working with these, I had a lot of color. Then I decided that they were these anonymous pots, almost the tourist pots that um, people sell towards the side of the road. But by making them white, they also reminded me of ghosts, of spirits. The only way I could rationalize color is yellow, I thought was also a color of the spirit. So that I have one yellow piece, which was done for the show. So they're Ozark Martin tourist pots, pots you might find in a haunted house.